Good morning. 5.45 on the six o'clock. Knocked out 20 minutes on the bike. Doing my thing. A little bit of mobility to start the day. Really does make a big difference. And if you're a strength athlete, if you can invest 30 minutes into your morning to getting some blood moving and getting in and doing a little bit of mobility, like life will improve drastically. And I mean that, like number one performance enhancer, no doubt about it. So I joined like a local, like a 24 hour type gym. We have Snap Fitness here, I don't know what you guys have. Uh, it's like a block or two from my house. The reason being for that is like with my knee and soon to be rehab, having some options for machines is gonna be a much better fit for me than always trying to do head field squats or put the bar on my back. I'm not a big fan of machines, but in this phase and cycle right now, I'm bodybuilding. And so that's gonna be fine. You know, that's gonna give me plenty of opportunity to fatigue muscles without stress on my knee. I noticed yesterday I went and did leg press, leg curls, leg extensions, and uh, adductors. Really trashed the quads and hamstrings and my knee didn't hurt at all. So that's a huge plus. So while it may not be the greatest overall way to train, it's gonna be what's best for me right now. And whatever's best for me right now is getting me back toward where I wanna be, where I'm strong, where I'm powerful. Still, no update on certain, that stinks. All right, let's start the day. A beautiful fall day at 90 degrees. Fucking come on fall, get your shit together. All right, so I'm gonna run to the Nike outlet. They had a pair of Metcons I think I want. <sighs> Go check those out. Or a new pair of training shoes. That's basically it, nothing special. And they had a colorway there I haven't seen anywhere else. It's like this forest green and uh, kind of like a pink marbled sole. So pretty sweet. Go check it out and uh, add those to the old repertoire. got shoes I wanted All right, two pair I've been looking at the Metcons and this hot pink and forest green pretty fly and I got some Nike uh, Roshis dig these two they look like a uh, like a poor man's easy so I've been getting asked a lot more recently a you know, by people from Instagram or Facebook Messenger talking about they want to start an apparel company or a business. And I, I wanted to think about my response to my advice, my feelings on all that. And I'm gonna really harsh switch into a bit of a rant about what I've learned and what I think about doing that. Um, little disclaimer here. Hey Brand Goods has been around for two years. Um, and there is a lot of truth to fake it till you make it. Just keep hustling and just keep doing the next thing. So hope you guys enjoy uh, a little bit of, I guess, advice or me speaking on the experience that I've had. As far as like starting a business goes, I mean, make sure this is something you're passionate about. Now, everyone wants to kind of have this side thing take off and I don't know anyone who's actually made that work. It's always, look, I'm very fortunate because I've, I've got enough spare time with my life that I can push this and we've built the business from day one so that it's scalable, like I said, so that no matter what quantity we're doing, the amount of work that I'm actually doing doesn't change a whole lot. With that said, it is now acting like I've got two full-time jobs. 
which is fine, which I'm very, very happy about and very, very pleased. I'm not complaining, just stating how it is. But if you're going to want something to really take off, you've got to be committed to it and you're going to have to pour everything into it. And that's advertising, that's doing all that. And you don't have to do things the normal way. Everything can start with a YouTube channel. You can start with, you know, building an Instagram following. That's kind of the cool thing right now is advertising basically is free. However, cream still rises. And so if what you're producing isn't what people want, then it's not going to sell and people aren't going to find it and people aren't going to spread word about it, right? So trying to have something that people are going to be into and a message that they can stand behind, that's really going to help. That's going to be key. Uh, I've been offered some opportunities to work with some different stuff and I haven't found anything I want to throw time and effort into. It's just not fair. It's not fair to my brand and it's not fair to someone else who would like me to be involved when I know that I can't give it 100%. So if you don't think that you can give something that type of effort, don't start a business. You don't need a big investment. You don't need a bunch of money. You don't need any of those things. Well, I guess depending on what you want to do. I don't want to open a gym. I don't want to open a brick and mortar business. I don't understand why I would want to do that these days. Uh, I mean, I really don't have, you know, a following for hate brand on a local level. It's all national or worldwide. So, you know, the number of people on earth, the billions and billions of people, I have a very, very, very tiny percentage that's into my stuff. But you can manage that by trying to keep your overhead low. Try to do as much as you can in house. That's, that's another big key to keep that hustle. And, and two, you can't be scared to fail. I mean, I remember being broke and like we were pretty broke. Like we were talking about bankruptcy at one point and we're struggling to pay the note on our old house. And, and this is while we were working a lot and I had the bike shop and stuff like that and I didn't put the effort into the bike shop that I should have. I don't know that the return on that investment would have ever really paid off or how it could have scaled because of the town and location and those things. But I know now at at, at 33 that it wasn't the effort I could have put into it. That led to it being the way it is. Plus our overhead was too high. We had three owners and we have a, a place that's you know was expensive to rent. And all of those things contributed. But you can't be scared to fail. If you're gonna be scared to fail and you're always waiting to think that there's a better time to start doing, you, you're gonna miss out. Just start, do whatever the next step is. Take the next step, take the plunge, and get working. Um, start small, there's nothing wrong with that, and build. It doesn't have to be this full-blown, like corporate-sized business from day one. Just start small and see if it grows. So that's that. I hope that helps anyone out or answers some questions about you getting started doing your own thing. And uh, back to some quench, quick bench workout. Enjoy. Real stoked with that. Worked up to 3.30 for uh, my sets of four on bench. Really happy with the way it moved. Uh, nothing crazy different this week than the last couple. Groove felt way better, shoulder felt stronger. I don't know why. Um, I'm gonna attribute it to being smart of the rehab and Andy digging into the shoulder. I have to get that done again this week. So I'm gonna wrap up, slap on slanger, and then hammer away at a little heavier weight, like uh, 3.52 and uh, get some extra work in.
dips, some tricep extensions, and I'm gonna rest up, finish up with uh, some like J impresses with center mass bells. Whole upper body workout. Felt good, bench felt really strong tonight. Stoked on that with being in a deficit. Diet's going well. Whew. Taco Tuesday. Now it's time to eat. Here's some food.